Get out your King James Bible and let's turn to Ezekiel chapter 31 and verse 1. This will be the conclusion of you only have I known. And that's the Lord speaking to Israel. That's in the book of Amos. I believe it's in the third chapter. And basically, were there people on the earth before Adam or two-legged creatures? Well, let's take a look at Ezekiel chapter 31 and verse 1. And it came to pass in the eleventh year, in the third month, in the first day of the month, that the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak unto Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and to his multitude. Whom art thou like in thy greatness? Behold, the Assyrian was a cedar in Lebanon with fair branches and with a shadowing shroud and of an high stature, and his top was among the thick bowels. The waters made him great. The deep set him up on high with her rivers running round about his plants and sent out her little rivers unto all the trees of the field. Therefore his height was as exalted above all the trees of the field, and his bowels were multiplied, and his branches became long because of the multitude of waters when he shot forth. All the fowls of heaven made their nests in his bowels, and under his branches did all the beasts of the field bring forth their young, and under his shadow dwelt all great nations. Now how can nations be under a tree? Unless, of course, these are figures of speech, right? Thus was he fair in his greatness, in the length of his branches, for his root was by great waters. Now, if you want to do a more detailed study on this, um, I have, you go to my channel, and in the little search box, um, type in trees, T-R-E-E-S, and I go into this in depth. Now, listen to this. Thus was he fair in his greatness. In the length of his branches, for his root was by great waters. The cedars in the garden of God could not hide him. The fir trees were not like his boughs, and the chestnut trees were not like his branches, nor any tree in the garden of God was like unto him in his beauty. Listen carefully. I have made him fair by the multitude of his branches, so that all the trees of Eden, Eden, that were in the garden of God, envied him. Huh? I have made him fair by the multitude of his branches, so that all the trees of Eden, that were in the garden of God, envied him. What kind of trees are these? Are these family trees? And how can trees have envy? Envy is an emotion. You know, you're, you're talking about, you know, uh, does a dog have envy? I, you know, is, isn't envy a, a, a two-legged creature's emotion? You know, some people envy others because they drive Rolls Royces or live in beachfront property mansions, you know, or or they have good-looking spouses or people envy movie stars for their looks and money or whatever and fame. How can trees, a plant, have envy and emotion? 
So obviously this must be some kind of figure of speech. I have made him fair by the multitude of his branches so that all the trees of Eden that were in the garden of God envied him. Now this is talking about the Assyrian. So does this mean that there were other family trees in the Garden of Eden besides just Adam and Eve? Well, you know, you think about it. <clears throat> you have all these different ethnic groups. You know, when you go to other parts of the world, I mean, if you go to India, they have Hinduism, which has hundreds of thousands of different gods. You go to deeper into Asia, you find Buddhism. If you go to Africa, you find, I don't know, for lack of a better term, voodoo. They're into voodoo and animism and all kinds of other stuff. You go to South America, uh, for example, Mexico City was the capital of the Aztec Empire. They did cannibalism and human sacrifice. You go to other parts of South America, you had the Mayans and the Incas, and they were basically like the Aztecs. Uh, then they converted to some kind of Catholicism type of deal, which uh, when you read the Bible, Catholicism just, I don't know, it's an extremely corrupted version, although there's a lot of things in Protestantism that isn't much better. But let's face it. It's only been Europeans that printed the Bibles, that built the churches, and exalted the gospel of Jesus Christ. But that was long ago. Christ warned that there'd be a falling away. And it's happened. You can't even find hardly any Christians anymore, so... All right, let's keep reading. Ezekiel 31.10. So were there other groups of people before Adam kind, before Adam and Eve? I don't know. It, uh, you read this and it, it makes you think. I mean, after all, uh, when Cain was cast out, he was worried about people killing him. Well, if it was only him and, and Adam and Eve, who, who would have killed him? And how does he go and build a, a city? You know, it said he went to the east and he built it a city. How does he build a city when it's just him and a wife? You know, think about it. Ezekiel 31.10 Therefore, thus saith the Lord God. Now, this is part three. If you missed part one and two, parts one and two, I do the background for this. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because thou hast lifted up thyself in height and hath shot up his top among the thick boughs, and his heart is lifted up in his height, I have therefore delivered him into the hand of the mighty one of the heathen. He shall surely deal with him. I have driven him out for his wickedness. And strangers, the terrible of the nations, have cut him off and have left him upon the mountains, and in the valleys his branches are fallen, and his boughs are broken by all the rivers of the land, and all the people of the earth are gone down from his shadow, and have left him. Upon his ruin shall all the fowls of the heaven remain, and all the beasts of the field shall be upon his branches. To the end that none of all the trees by the waters exalt themselves for their height, neither shoot up their top among the thick boughs, neither their trees stand up in their height, all that drink water, for they are all delivered unto death to the nether parts of the earth. Ooh. For they are all delivered unto death to the nether parts of the earth. You ever heard of the nether world? 
It's talking about hell. The Greeks called it Tartarus. The Hebrews called it Sheol. Yes, sometimes Sheol was the grave, and then other times it was referred to as hell. You know, Jesus warned about hell. He warned about he flames of fire. So how, why, are, why would they deliver trees to the nether parts of the earth? That doesn't make sense if it's talking about trees. For they are all delivered unto death to the nether parts of the earth in the midst of the children of men with them that go down to the pit. If you want to read about the pit, read Isaiah 14, about the fall of Lucifer. Unless you read a modern Bible version, then it's the morning star that went down to the pit. And then when you read Revelation 22, Jesus says he's the morning star. And they call that scholarship. So they get rid of Lucifer going down to the pit, which everybody knows what who Lucifer is. And they insert a name that Jesus calls himself. Thus you have Jesus going down to the pit. Yeah, and they call that scholarship. People like James White. Boy, I wouldn't want to... I've got a lot to answer to, to the Lord on Judgment Day. But I tell you what, I wouldn't want to be James White on Judgment Day. He defends that kind of stuff. So, Verse 15, Thus saith the Lord God, In the day when he went down to the grave, I caused a mourning. I covered the deep for him. Now they're talking about trees. Now they're, they're using, uh, what is it, pronouns, right? I covered the deep for him, and I restrained the floods thereof, and the great waters were stayed. And I caused Lebanon to mourn for him, and all the trees of the field fainted for him. Now, how can trees faint? I made the nations to shake at the sound of his fall when I cast him down to hell with them that descend into the pit. And all the trees of Eden, the choice and best of Lebanon, all that drink water shall be comforted in the nether parts of the earth. They also went down into hell with him unto them that be slain with the sword, and they that were his arm that dwelt under his shadow in the midst of the heathen. To whom art thou thus like in glory and in greatness among the trees of Eden? Yet shalt, yet shalt thou be brought down with the trees of Eden unto the nether parts of the earth. Thou shalt lie in the midst of the uncircumcised, with them that be slain by the sword. This is Pharaoh and all his multitude, saith the Lord God. How can a tree be circumcised? Hmm? How can a tree be uncircumcised? All right, well, that's the end of Ezekiel chapter 31. And probably the conclusion of you only have I known. So were there other trees, two-legged walking trees, in the Garden of God, in Eden? Was Adam the last of God's creation to be the progenitors of Israel? I don't know. You tell me. All right, well, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God, slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.